So we're going to show you how to create a stress strain plot based on a model that has periodic boundary condition imposed on it. So if you're interested in this, sit back and relax and get started. So what I'm going to do first is to show you the theory of actually how periodic boundary condition can be imposed on a model and then the sort of variables that you're going to ask your simulation to give you in order to post process the model so that you can generate stress and strain data from that. So let's say we are working with this. Basically, this is a steel domain, a steel RVE with a dimension of 100 by 100 and it's got very small voids distributed randomly within it. The first thing you need to do is to decide on how you're going to load the model in order to generate this tensile, uniaxial tensile behavior. The approach I'm going to use for imposing periodic boundary condition requires me to specify the model. So the corner nodes here, I will note them and I will anchor them in this way. And then I will need to also apply a periodic boundary condition, so which is basically distributive behavior. So this is the requirement of periodic boundary condition. And I need to note the unique corner nodes, so node 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the system. And then I'll also need to apply a displacement to load the model so that you get a uniaxial tensile deformation along this x-axis according to this reference frame. So this is the setup of a model, periodic boundary condition imposed on it, and also with the load that initiates the sort of deformation that we want. And we're loading it at this point, N2. But we need to then move forward to get to the point of getting stress strain data. So the first thing we need to then do is note these corner nodes. Each of those corner nodes will have a coordinate position in space. And so what I've got here is x1, y1, x2, y2 are the corner nodes, which are the location for node 1, 2, and 3, 4 in space. Then the next thing is that I need to also know that each of these corner nodes, because they have boundary condition imposed on them, they are locked in, they will have reactions. So the first set of reactions I will see here are the x-axis reaction forces and x potential x-axis displacement. So in this case, we have x u x1, which is the displacement of this node in the x direction, u x2 displacement of the node in the two direction, node two. Incidentally, it will take the value of dx because this is the load that we are imposing on the model. And then we can run through and we get all the displacement and force components of this model in the x-axis. So we'll do the same in the y-axis, get x and y component of displacement and forces in the y component. And so this becomes a holistic picture of what's going on in the model. So we've got the coordinate position, we've got the reaction forces in the x, reaction forces in the y, we've got the displacement in the x and y direction for this system. We need to know all that because that will play a role in all generating our stress strain data subsequently. So let's look a little bit more on this and what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble all the coordinate positions and I need to ask my model to give me this world, these values during the running of the model. And so there's a variable called the CCOOR1, which is the coordinate position in the x direction, in the one direction, which is x, and the coordinate position in the two direction, which is the y. So once I set the model, I'll ask these values to be one of my history variables. So that's how I store the coordinate position. Then, of course, all the displacement for the four nodes in the x direction, I will also note them. And I'll call that as U1. So I'm going to ask for displacement in the one axis as for my model. The same thing in the Y direction, I'll call that U2. Then the reaction forces will also come in. So in the X axis, I've got reaction forces, which I'll call RF1, and then reaction forces, which I'll call RF2. So that means when I'm setting up the model and I want to get a handle on these variables, what I need to do is to ask the simulation to give me all these things. And once you get that, then how do we still move on to get a, a dummy node? Remember, this is the sort of boundary condition that we want to use on this model. We want three out of the four nodes to be constrained in this way. So that means the node that could have been here, node three, becomes a dummy node. It becomes a slave node. It's not contributing to what the system is doing. Now I have a new nodal lumbering system, so node one, node two, and now a new node three. Because the original node 3 is dropped, our node 4 is now renamed to node 3. So we've got the four nodes that will have histories attached to them. So what we then would have will be the histories for these three nodes in terms of their x and y coordinate positions. We'll also have the displacement for the three nodes in the x, displacement for y, 
reaction force in x and reaction force in y so we've got all that and we know what the variables will be for them so there is an equation in the literature and if you have access to my book where you can extract this equation so this equation is a, is a homogenized stress equation that helps you to generate the stress history on this material and with that stress history we can then go and evaluate what you see as volume here is the volume of that stress element that you're working with in this case so what i have as x1 is not just the x component alone but actually a positional position vector of x so x1 will be equal to x1 i plus y1 j okay what you have as f here is actually a, a, a vector of f of and that will have an x component and a y component with it and with that we have an assembly and then this is a cross product involved in order to generate the holistic homogenized stress strain data within the material so so we're going to look into a model and then see how this can be implemented so let's just pause a minute as we you know and i just want to remind you please if you haven't subscribed to this channel this is a good time to stop and subscribe and i'm going to give pause to allow you to actually subscribe thank you very much for doing that and if you have ideas or videos you want me to make please leave me a comment i read my comments and i try as much as possible to respond to them and to make videos if i can and where i cannot i would not be able to make but i really enjoy reading your comments and getting feedback from you so please leave me a comment or share this video with anyone who you think will be of benefit to them thank you and let's get back into this video all right so we've already set up a model in abacus it has run and it has generated a simulation of exactly what we're looking for the periodic boundary conditions so if we look at the analysis of the model you can see okay the stress element is deforming and then until the eventual fracture happens about this phase so what we have here are all excellently done so you can see the nice periodicity in the material in the front and the back the top and the bottom and everything looks well so while we are setting up the model we requested for coordinate one coordinate two u1 u2 rf1 and rf2 are the model so we're going to then operate with them if you want to see how this model has actually set up and how we got to this position this is a video that i've made that shows you extensively how to create this sort of model so but we're going to operate on this model to generate our stress strain data so if you see here if i create xy data i'm looking at the history variables so when i open the history you see there's a lot of variables that we ask for so for example you see this is the coordinate position so i press and drag while holding down control so you get to that coordinate x one and two for all the corner nodes so and then i'll press down control again i'll drag from here so this is reaction forces in one and two for the corner nodes again then still pressing down control drag from here and what you got here is displacement one and two for all those corner nodes so you assemble all that and then we'll now plot so once we've plotted this model it shows a jumble of all the data that we're looking out for and this is fine but we're going to then extract all these variables apply that homogenization equation for it and then we'll get our stress strain data so how do we do that so you go to plugins tools again i'll tell it excel utilities i'm looking for this current plot and you press ok so what would happen in the end is that it will then create an assembly of all the values that you have in the model so what we have here is the data that comes across from that simulation so what you see here is the time x1 time uh, coordinate position 3 coordinate position for node 4 reaction force the coordinate y position for all of them and then you now get the f s coordinate the reaction force in x for all the four nodes and then you go all the way to the end everything all specified and then when it gets to the end we can then work out what the force the strain and the stress will be so if we look more again at the table at the top here so we're looking at extension for a periodic boundary condition problem the length is 100 the width is 100 the thickness is one because it's a 2d problem and then we can work out that so we've got all that information so how do we then generate the force from the system so the force from the system is coming from that equation that we talked about before which is basically a cross product between the reaction force and the 
got net position. So again, I'm making available this uh, this Excel files so you can use it to as a template for your further analysis. But I do want you to study this. So the next thing here is just the the, the strain. The strain is simply the displacement in that x direction divided by the length of the material in that direction so the strain is quite easy to find and once you find all those forces using that cross product you divide it by the area of the material and what is the area of the material so it's the length and its weight of this material will be what you get as the area so that's what we have here and once you find all that located properly you apply it across the system it runs through and it generates the data for you and the kind of data we'll find is this, but if we look more closely on that data, it gives you a really nice plot showing you again the stress strain behavior of the system. And we find if you look more closely, we can work out what the Young's modulus of this material is. And the Young modulus can be calculated basically on this part, the stress and strain for the linear elastic part of the model, which is quite very narrow. And then the next thing we have here is the effective strength, so if, which is basically the ultimate tensor strength. So we are going to apply it across everything in this model. So the next thing we, have, we want to find is the effective strength, which is the ultimate tensor strength. So we're applying across the whole model on that column, so which is the stress column. So we apply it on that stress column, extract the absolute maximum stress in the model, and we're getting it around 294 which is sort of what you see here. So if you look more closely here, so 294 is somewhere around here. So you get your strain, your young smoothness around here. And this is sort of the answers that we're obtaining in this material. So there's a bit of a sensitivity in terms of the young smoothness. It's, it's not, the model is not resolving this quite well. And that's because our course, our mesh is very coarse in this case. And also, you know, maybe we need to control, add more points in that elastic region so that the system can extract, can yield the, the, the young smoothness of this material. But there, there's a whole lot of other things worth exploring. But the essence of this is to show you how you can generate stress strain data based on a periodic boundary condition problem. If you want to see how I set up the model from scratch to the point we specified before we get to this analysis stage, then look at this video that I've already made to show you how to go about doing this. If you really like the content I'm making, please do subscribe to this channel. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see. Thank you for interest in the channel. I'll see you in the next.